Hello everyone. I'm Priyanka. I'm a radiologist at Melbourne. I'm going to be speaking to you about the role of MRI in female pelvic diseases. And this is done as a series of lectures. In this first talk, I will just talk about the basic principles of MRI and its application in the female pelvic diseases. I have uh, split this talk to simplify. We will talk about when, why, and how do we do MRI of the pelvis. In younger women, MRI is uh, performed to assess for any pelvic congenital anomalies. In women of a plateau age group, it is done for diagnosis of adenomyosis, in treatment planning of benign malignant diseases, endometriosis and its staging, staging of malignancies. This is the mainstay of MRI and follow up of disease process. Why we all know the far superior soft tissue contrast that we get with MRI. It is much better than any other imaging modality of radiology. It also allows for multi-planar assessment of zonal pelvic anatomy. When we add functional study with perfusion and diffusion imaging, then MRI does allow us to identify a disease process as being benign or malignant. And this is by allowing the estimation of microvascular characteristics of that particular pathology and its cellularity. In terms of patient preparation, it's highly recommended that a patient is fasting for about 3 to 6 hours prior to the scan. Now this uh, reduces the bowel motion adequates. For the same purpose, it is also recommended to administer an anti-peristaltic agent such as vascopan or glucagon. Adding fat saturation bands to the anterior abdominal wall also help in eliminating emotional artifacts from the anterior abdominal wall. Patients should empty the bladder about an hour before the scan. Now, if the bladder is too full, it degrades the T2 weighted images by producing artifacts. Whereas, if the bladder is very empty, you're going to have a limitation that sometimes there is a uh, involvement of the bladder in pelvic pathologies and you may, you're not be able to assess that. Places do administer vaginal gel for about 20 cc of this. It is uh, going to be very helpful in diseases uh, such as tumor extending into the vagina or uh, congenital anemones of the pelvis or vagina even in endometriosis. Scheduling of exam according to menstrual cycle is not really necessary. Also because it delays the scan and the diagnosis and thereby delaying the treatment process for patients who do have malignancy. But it is uh, very useful to get information on patients' LNP, any hormone replacement therapy that she's on and if the patient has undergone any prior surgery. Now these are the sequences that are recommended. See, most of these are T2 weighted sequences, which is simply because of the far superior uh, zonal anatomy assessment that we get with T2 weighted sequences. In addition, DWI is recommended in one or two things with at least two B values. Ideally, obtaining uh, an axial DWI is more helpful, which is in along the cranial axis of the body, and that helps to reduce the artifacts compared to oblique scans. Uh, T1 weighted sequence is quite helpful to identify it for size of hemorrhage or endometrial deposits. I believe the slice thickness should be 3 millimeters or less. Now, adding uh, a coronal T2 weighted sequence from the renal hyla down to the pubic bones is going to help us uh, look for lymph nodes or any uh, hydronephrosis, which is very important in diagnosis of uh, pelvic tumors and if there is any presence of uh, bony metastasis. Now, coming to staging of the pelvic malignancies, recently FIGO underwent uh, revision in 2018 and it incorporated a uh, staging based on imaging and pathological findings when they're available. It is for this purpose that MRI is recommended now to be performed for uterine and cervical cancers so that a patient is assigned an, uh, an appropriate tumor stage which helps to tailor the treatment for her. 
Now, but I also help to assess the timber size, any parameter invasion, any pelvic sidewall invasion, or lymph node invasion. And all these are important in staging the tumor and in prognosticating the patient. This also is very, very important in fertility sparing surgery, which is considered in some patients with cervical cancers who are young and. Uh, we will be talking about this in the subsequent lecture. I hope you've enjoyed this.